Well, we do think it's very important to disaggregate because if it's 94% of the labor force, you have to be able to talk about it in meaningful categories. So the first big divide is whether you're self-employed or wage-employed. And among the self-employed, it would be whether you're an employer who hires others or are you just working on your own account or with, in a family unit. Um, the wage workers, um, some informal wage workers actually work for formal firms, right? And some work for the informal enterprises. And then there's a lot of intermediate categories that don't get well captured. If you're an industrial out worker working under a subcontract for a firm, there's no category in statistics yet for industrial out workers. Um, now, what Ravi Kanbur and other economists are interested in is how many of the informal workforce are deliberately evading uh, registration or regulations. How many are just, you know, sort of able to stay under the radar just because there's their size, and how many of them do the regulations and registration really have no meaning at all, right? Now that it's hard to do because those are very subjective kind of measures. But our feeling is that, um, and what we know from the data, among the self-employed informal workers, less than 10% in almost every region are hire others. And it's the employer class of the self-employed that are really um, doing well, can earn above the minimum wage, above the poverty line. Um, the ones who work on their own account don't hire others, do like wage workers do. They don't do particularly well. So we can use, we think those can be used as proxies for who's trying to avoid regulation and who's, who's not. So we would say the employer class could be the plucky entrepreneur who's trying to avoid regulations. It could be a proxy. But getting those other measures, that's, that's more difficult.